this video is to show you how to operate the equipment and the safety precautions that you will need for liquid-liquid phase equilibrium. The equilibrium you are investigating is phenol and water. I've got some phenol in the jar here. It's, um, it's a crystalline solid. Uh, this is one of the experiments we really do insist that you wear gloves for. Phenol, um, it was used as a disinfectant, still is. It smells kind of like a disinfectant, but that's usually a liquid um, solution of it. The raw solid can burn your skin. So we're using phenol and water and investigating the phase phenomena. You will be making up several mixtures in different proportions of phenol plus water in just large test tubes. It's very, very low-tech equipment here. And you do that weighing out by mass. The best way to measure these is actually by mass. So I'm actually going to measure about five mils, but I'm going to do it reasonably accurately using the graduated cylinder. Tear it. Here we go. And It's about five grams, so 5.34. Write this down and then actually weigh this once you've dispensed the liquid so it's the difference in the amount of water. So record that, 5.3473. Dispense. Minus 1403. 1403 and that gives me how much water went in. I'll then need to weigh the phenol by mass. And as I said, this is the nasty stuff. So, you know, try not to get it on anybody else as well. Tear that. And once teared, take And that's 3.14 grams phenol. And this solid we dispense into the test tube like that. And this is now ready to mix. Now, you will make a series of these with different proportions of phenol to water and test them. Let's go and do the testing now. This is a sample of phenol plus water, and in the bottom of that is a magnetic stir bar. That's just one of these. And we have the stirrer going to ensure that it's uniform. Now, you'll notice this looks decidedly milky. That's because you have two separate liquid phases present, the phenol-heavy phase and the water-heavy phase. It turns out that at higher temperatures, this becomes a single phase. And you are interested in the temperature at which it changes. So we put a th thermocouple probe in there. And at the moment, it's about 25 degrees in there. And I'll start heating it up. This looks like a demented hair dryer. That's almost exactly what it is. Technical name is a hot air gun. And you'll see the temperature is going up here. Still cloudy. And look, we've now got a single clear phase. Now, you'll probably overshoot when this happens, but what we do at this point is continue to watch and let it cool, and what you're looking for is the first appearance of milkiness. You'll see it grows like a wisp, and then everything will suddenly become cloudy. That's the temperature you want to record. 
and I've done this sample before, so I know when it's going to be. It's pretty soon now. And there we go. It's now become opaque at 65.9 degrees. That's the information you want from this particular sample. What I suggest you do is heat this up again and cool it again. You can get the data two or three times from the same sample to make sure that you've got it um, accurately. And it wasn't just one reading. If you like, you can turn the heat gun onto cool air, and as in it's not heating, and that will sometimes cool it down faster if you've gone too high. Now, that's it for the liquid-liquid phase. At the ends of the uh, phase diagram, where it's nearly all phenol or where it's nearly all water, you will actually not get two liquids, you will get liquid solid. This is a different portion of the phase diagram. And for this kind of part of the phase diagram, actually, you'll need an ice bath. There is ice available. It comes in a clearly labeled container. You aren't the only person using the ice um, today, so look around. The kinetics people use ice as well. You'll want something about this size about half full of ice, and into this you put some water and rock salt. And we have a large bucket of rock salt here, which lives nearby. Add the salt as it goes in. Add some water to this, and then put the entire bath around the phenol. Now, you need to have the rock salt enough out of the way that you can watch your sample. So add a little liquid to that. It might be easier if you used a glass ice bath. It's up to you. But what you are looking for is the second phase. In some cases, this will go cloudy, and that means a second liquid phase. In some cases, you will get crystals coming out. It looks like snow. And in fact, that's exactly what it is. It's either water crystals or it's phenol crystals coming out. But that's the second phase. And if you know which phase it was, it will tell you what portion of the phase diagram you're looking at. The actual technique for this experiment isn't difficult, but you do need to be careful in terms of using um, gloves when handling phenol, and you need to take a number of data points at a number of different temperatures. In terms of cleanup, all phenol water mixtures need to go into the appropriate waste bottle. You'll find this near the site. So make sure that you pour them into the waste bottle before you've finished. You do need to be careful not to throw away the stir bar. And make sure that you're wearing gloves when you do this. And your rock salt ice bath can just go down the sink. And that's how you do a liquid-liquid equilibrium experiment.